My name is Dimitri and I develop software for the mind, for the body and for the machines. When I say software, I don't mean something that can only run on the computer. It's a metaphor. So your body is like the hardware and you install an application or a program that you can run and see how differently it makes you feel, how it makes you change the way that you perceive the world and how it also transforms the way you interact with it. The main idea in my practice is how you can reprogram yourself using the different tools, frameworks and uh, experiences that you come into contact with. And how it can allow you to live a different version of yourself, how you can explore how it could be otherwise. So this is why it's also interesting to do it in the context of existing otherwise at Gallery Wedding, where we will collectively explore how we can use our body and our practices in order to change and transform our behavioral patterns. One of the practices that I'm working on is called 8OS Body-Mind Operating System, where the central idea is how we can use the body to actually reprogram ourselves and transform ourselves and to change the way that we think and act in the world. For instance, if we talk about a concept like resilience, it can be a very abstract and intellectual concept and we can have a discussion about it. But if we really want to understand it in a way that is embodied on the level of our body, uh, it's actually very nice to use uh, some physical exercises that allow us to experience what this concept of resilience really means. For that, we have one exercise in A2S where we use a, like a training knife and we imagine that it's an incoming impulse into our body. So if we resist this incoming impulse, if it's coming into my hand and I resist, it's going to damage me. So I'm not being resilient. If I just get soft and let it go through, it's just going to cut through. So I'm also not resilient. So resilience is something where you can do assimilation and then repulsion. So you assimilate the incoming impulse. You go in the same direction along and then you redirect it. And then it becomes really interesting, you know, how, how you can actually practice it with the body, this idea of resilience using this tool. So I give myself an impulse, I go along and redirect. I give myself an impulse, I go along and redirect. An impulse, redirect. And then, of course, there are interesting ethical implications because I can transfer it outside of the physical context and see that, okay, this could also be something that someone says to me or something that happens in my life, how I can react in this way as well, how I can be not resisting but rather going along with the impulse and redirecting it in a certain direction. And there are of course also aesthetic implications because I can make a dance with it as well and explore how it makes me move in a different way. What would the dance of resilience be? And this is also what we're going to explore collectively in the context of existing otherwise to see how we can take these concepts, explore them from theoretical perspective, from the physical perspective, see what ethical implications it has and also what aesthetic implications it has as well. And then see how we can transfer it into other contexts, not necessarily the physical one or the artistic one, but also how we can actually practice all these ideas in everyday life. One other important aspect of A2S practice is how we can use technology to enhance our understanding of the dynamics that can happen in our body. For instance, if we take the concept of adaptivity, you know, when are we most adaptive? When we look at the living systems, they are adaptive because they're always changing. But if we just say this and we try to move in a way that is changing, it can be very subjective. So what we developed is a system that has motion tracking sensors. I have them attached here on my hands, on my waist and on my legs that are measuring my movement in real time and shows me how variable my movement is on every level. And then it estimates a state that I'm in. 
So what research has found is that when you are in a fractal state, which is shown with this sign here, you are most adaptive to external environment. And when I say fractal, it's not the kind of fractal that you would find uh, in an image. It's a self-repetitive process. So my movements repeat, but they repeat on every scale, on the smaller scale and on the bigger scale. So there is always change, but that change is itself changing. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So I start moving, and as I'm moving, I'm changing something. And this change is also translated into the graph. And I get this live feedback on the state that I'm in. So for instance, here I see that I'm a little bit tense in my left hand. I'm not really being adaptive there. So I'm going to try to play a little bit more with this hand and try to move it differently, change the way that it moves fast, slow, big, small, and integrate all these possibilities into my movement. So I become really responsive to whatever impulse might come, be it a very small one or a big one as well. And as you see, it gets fractal now and on every level of the body. And so I kind of use this live feedback provided by technology to understand how I can become more adaptive and variable in the way that I move, exploring both the feeling that I have with it, but also seeing how it can be seen a different way on the aesthetic level. So what kind of dance I create with this variability. And then, of course, practicing it with other people in the group and seeing what kind of dynamics you can actually create together when you move like this, what changes when you start interacting in this way and responding to people in that way. So this is one interesting way for us to use technology because we don't use it for the sake of technology, but to rather see how we can expand and enhance our understanding of natural processes that surround us and to kind of use it as inspiration to go into some areas that we wouldn't have otherwise explored. And one other important thing here is that the presence of technology allows you to be choreographed not by a central person like a choreographer, but rather an algorithm which is just giving you feedback like a mirror. So you're moving and you're getting this direct feedback, you're sculpting this data as you move, you're also sculpting your body, and then you can take this data and you can transfer it into another context. Maybe you make music with it or you print something in 3D, you make a visualization, or you just see the response and you get it back into the body, have an idea, come up with a new thought, write it down, make research with it. So this is how it all becomes really interconnected. The movement flows into the visual, the visual goes back into movement, into ideas, you generate some new research, write code, integrate it, and then play with it again to somehow surprise yourself in new ways. Another way of integrating technology into practice is through this tool that I developed that's called Infranodus. It's based on network thinking, on this idea of polysingularity, that everything consists of relationships. And the way it works is that you can put your ideas in, so whatever it is that you're thinking or writing, visualize it as a network graph where the words are the nodes and the co-occurrences and the connections between them. So you start seeing relationships between your thoughts and you see what are the main topics, what are the most influ influential terms inside and how they all connect. So it provides you a really good overview and a visualization of your thought as well. And one other important feature it has is that it also detects the structural gap in your idea. So, so the two clusters that could be connected but are not yet very well connected. And then it proposes you to ask a research question that would link those two together so that you can start developing your thought in this kind of structural way where you start to think, okay, what are the gaps in my ideas? How I can bridge them with some new ideas? What happens when I do that? How does it change my discourse? And then there is this constant interaction between your thoughts. So you might think something, make a new connection. Maybe I'm writing about movement, so I make this connection. I go into space and move. Then it helps me generate a new thought. I, I come back to this. I add something inside. Maybe it creates a shape visually that I like. So 
even here I think I can show you that it can be like also visualized as a like in a completely different way so, so so I create a different shape and then it makes me move in a different way I come back to it add something more so all these different practices become in symbiotic relationship with each other where they influence and uh, help each other evolve somehow even this tool in itself can be used as a synth so I can start playing these thoughts that I'm making create music with them add some more connections interact with them in this musical way and generate some new connections between the ideas and between the practices as well idea of bringing the different practices together manifests itself in the project that I do together with my collaborator Diego Agujo. It's a publishing house that is called Circadian where we publish books on practice by different authors. The idea is that every book should call a person to action. So the author is writing about their artistic practice or something that they like doing in everyday life but they write it in a way that enables the reader to actually take the book and to bring this into action so that they can actually do this practice themselves. For instance, there is one book on dreaming from Pleo Paloma and then another book on creating together and what happens when you bring those two practices together. So maybe you can actually create together in your dreams or you can create dreams together and so on. So there is also a link in between all these different books and there is again this proposition of how you could take a practice and also bring it outside of itself, bring it into relation with other practices, create something together. And this is also very much present as well in this space, which is my studio, uh, which is located uh, in the divide between the East and the West. So there was a wall going through before. And this is a very special space to me as well, because it kind of reflects this idea of connecting all the different elements of life together. So at some point you're moving, then you're thinking, then maybe you have an idea and you cook something with this idea. Then some, someone comes by and maybe brings uh, like a book that you read and then there is an object that is left after this person. So for example, this, this studio was really empty before and then when my friend Colin uh, came in for a residency here and we worked together, he brought in a lot of music equipment and a lot of plants as well. So he made it look differently and also suddenly there was much more music in the space which was not so nice for the neighbors but that was really nice for us as well. And then he left uh, but everything stayed after him and then someone else comes in. So for example my partner Anastasia comes in and she brings in a lot of images and also brings in a little bit of order into the chaos of the studio so then it becomes a little bit more organize easier to separate things then Diego comes in with the book so everyone leaves a trace behind them a part of their practice that is ready to be activated at, at any moment of time and that is also inviting you to try it out um, see how it works and then also see how it could be applied outside of itself in a different context outside of the art realm in everyday life and this kind of also playful interaction between the things is very important to me as well and this is what I also try to practice when I do things just to play around with them and to enjoy all the different connections they make without necessarily thinking what it actually means. Mm -hmm.